Hey there, and welcome back to Naturologies by DIY Nature. I'm Amanda, and today I'm going to show you how to plan and build your very own native bee garden, the easy way. Native bees are essential pollinators, and creating a bee-friendly space, even on a balcony, can make a huge difference. And the best part? You don't need to be an expert gardener. If you missed part one, I definitely recommend going back. We covered what native bees are, how they're different from honeybees, and why they matter so much to our gardens. It's a great foundation for today's video. Now, we're going beyond just flowers. We're talking full-on habitat, nesting sites, planting selection, and layout tips, all backed by science and simplified, so you can build a garden that truly buzzes with life. A quick note before we dive in. Thank you so much for your patience. This video took a lot longer than usual between weather delays and some hilarious editing fails, but it's finally here and packed with helpful info. So let's begin. Bees have complex life cycles and specific habitat needs that make them vulnerable to environmental changes. However, at a basic level, bees need a nest site, food, water, shelter, and a healthy habitat in which to find all four of those things. Bee gardens can fit any space, big or small. The key is understanding how your space functions. Is it a front yard or backyard? How much time do you want to spend maintaining it? What region do you live in? What's your climate? Start by thinking about how people and pets move through space. Will it be a spot where people walk through, sit near, or mostly just view from a distance? Once you have an idea of what the space will be used for and how people will get in and around it, or through it, or near it at all, it's time to take a look at your space. This would be a great time to grab a pencil and paper to jot down what you should be assessing or you could go to diynature.org slash bees and download my free bee garden assessment sheet. Things you'll want to jot down include where you would like to put this garden. A bee-friendly landscape doesn't have to be separate from your living space. Feel free to blend bee habitat with your usable space by lining driveways, decks, or walkways with a variety of plants. Don't worry about attracting bees into your space. If you don't bother the bees, they won't bother you. Break out the measuring tape. How big of an area is it? What is the general shape? Will there be a pathway through the garden or will it border a fence, sidewalk, or existing garden? Is there something currently planted in that space? Will the garden be in the ground or in containers? If in the ground, what is your soil like? Sand, loom, clay, wet, dry, kind of moist. Check out my free download on how to conduct a soil test to learn more. Does this area get full sun or is it in part shade? What time of day does this area get the sun? List the plants that you intend to keep around and within the new garden. List any abiotic, non-living features that will stay in or around the area as well, including things like water features, bare ground, dead trees or logs, light sources, pathways, walls, seating, etc. What's your budget? Set your max, even if it's just $15. Also, keep in mind pesticides. Avoid areas near neighbors who spray. Yes, it easily wafts over property lines. Smell pollution is another big thing. Try to avoid placing it near a location that gets heavy, high-speed car traffic, or anywhere a car might be idling for a long period of time. Native bees nest in a range of places and materials. In the ground, in old logs, in hollow stems. There are even bees that nest in snail shells. While some bees are nocturnal, most are diurnal, but try to keep inside light in and ensure that outdoor lights are motion censored and dim. That goes for your neighbors too. 
If you want to learn more about the numerous negative effects of artificial light on wildlife, check out darksky.org. Let's talk about food. What will your garden feed bees? This is often the trickiest part, but don't worry, I've broken it down and there's even a shortcut if you're not ready to DIY a custom list. Remember, adult bees drink nectar for energy while they collect pollen to feed their young. Different flowers produce nectar and pollen with varying degrees of nutritional values. Pollen is especially important for bee larvae as it provides their main source of protein, amino acids, and vitamins, and fats. A successful bee-friendly garden is determined by selecting the right plants for both your garden and the bees. Most bee-friendly plants support a diversity of bee species, and there are many that are easy to grow and are long blooming, so your garden will be filled with flowers for as long as possible with the least amount of effort, which should leave you plenty of time to go out and bee watch. Start with the Xerces Society Pollinator Plant List. It's region specific and free to download at xerces.org slash pollinator dash resources dash center. So the Xerces Society is an organization that protects the natural world through conservation of invertebrates and their habitats. They have three key program areas, pollinator conservation, endangered species conservation, and reducing pesticide use and impacts. From the main website of the Xerces Society, go to resources, pollinator conservation resource center, from here, you're going to select, scroll down and select your region. Then from this page, scroll further down until you see plant lists and then click to expand, select native plants for pollinators and beneficial insects. From here, you can go ahead and download as a PDF. I recommend printing and I will show you why. Once you've downloaded your list, we're gonna jot down plant height, and whether or not we like the looks of the plant. In order to do this, we have to go and actually do a little bit of research. You can try plants.usda.gov. You can go check out books from your local library, or you can get local guides such as this one that I have here, Native Plants for Northern, Northern Virginia. This one is from Plant Nova Natives. And it has a very handy list that you can see here. And it gives us the scientific name, common name, height, the amount of sun it needs, moisture, wildlife. And then it has details here that we can look into. This is a great resource. Another resource would be the Lady Bird Johnson website. Before you go and look up every single one of these, let's save you some time. Filter by form. Make sure that you're not putting a tree in a small little container bee garden. So you can immediately go over and cross those off. Next, if you have partial sun, mostly partial sun, barely any full sun, then I would go in here and cross off anything that requires only full sun. Next would be your soil. After that, I would come in and if you are dead set on only feeding the bees, here's your opportunity to go in and cross anything off that would not necessarily be feeding the bees. Next, I would come in here and determine my plant life. This is the last step that I would filter on before going and getting my height requirements. Um, if you are a busy person and you do not plan on doing a lot of weeding and you don't want to have to replant or ensure that plants are regrowing next year, you're going to want to stick with perennials for life type. 
So once you have that dwindled down, you have some crossed off already, now is the time to go and check out some websites, books, or any other resource that you are able to get in your region to determine plant height and what it looks like and whether or not you like it. After we have our list set up, we're going to double check our bloom times. So what I did here was just a simple quick chart. I actually even ran out of room. I was able to just pull it over to the right. So we want to check the bloom times to ensure coverage from spring all the way through the fall. Try to include at least nine different native species. Three for spring, three for summer, three for fall. Here's a pro tip. Cluster the same species in groups of three plants. This is because bees prefer mass plantings over individual ones. Remember, they don't want to exert themselves too much by flying from one little flower over here to one little flower over here. It's better if they're all together and then they can visit a bunch of those little flowers all in one little section. If that still feels overwhelming, don't worry. You don't have to go all in right away. Even a few native plants in a simple container can make a difference for pollinators. Start small, learn as you grow, and expand when you're ready. Here's a shortcut. If creating your own plant list sounds daunting and you'd rather skip straight to the good stuff, check out the Circe Society Habitat Kits page. They'll tell you exactly what to plant and make it easy to get started. Now, a bee garden isn't just about food. It's about habitat. And bees need water. Just like us, they rely on water to stay hydrated and regulate their temperatures inside their nests. You can help by placing a shallow dish filled with clean water in your yard. Add pebbles, marbles, or small sticks so that the bees have a safe place to land and drink without the risk of drowning. Refresh the water regularly and place the dish in a shady, quiet spot for best results. When it comes to nesting, most bees fall into one of two categories, ground nesters or cavity nesters. While their nesting styles differ, both need one critical thing, undisturbed spaces. Ground nesting bees choose a variety of soil types depending on the species. Some prefer bare, sandy areas, while others favor unmowed lawns or hard packed soil. The good news? Creating habitat for them is incredibly simple. Pick a sunny patch and leave it alone. <laughs> That's it. No mulch, no landscape fabric, no digging, no tilling. Even small areas of bare ground help, especially if they're near flowers. Bees will use the warm earth to rest and sun themselves. And interestingly, the males will even use these areas as battlegrounds in aerial displays to defend their territory. Cavity nesters, such as mason bees and leafcutter bees, prefer tight spaces like hollow stems or beetle burrows in wood. You can support them by leaving dead plant stems standing throughout the winter. In spring, cut them back to 8 to 24 inches. These hollow or pithy stems make excellent nesting spots. Providing dead wood or brush piles, even better. These offer natural habitats and often contain beetle holes that bees can reuse. Installing a bee hotel, do so with care. <laughs> Use one with removable tubes and clean it annually or replace the tubes to prevent parasites and disease. All right, let's do a quick recap. First, know your space. Second, pick native plants that bloom in different seasons. Locally native is always best, but if you can only find regional natives, use them. Third, include undisturbed nesting sites and offer a refreshing bit of water. And finally, avoid pesticides and try to avoid smell pollution. No matter the size of your garden, whether it's a tiny two by two container or a whole backyard, 
you can make a real impact for pollinators. And bonus, you'll get to enjoy a beautiful buzzing garden in the process. I'd love to hear from you. Drop a comment below and let me know which native plants you're planning to add to your garden this year. Be sure to check out the video description for all the links and freebies and extra resources mentioned today. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, happy gardening.